Yo, what's up guys? Uh, it's Noah here breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Thursday, November, uh, November the 14th. Um, so on DraftKings, we got a five-game slate today, and over on Yahoo, they're including the six o'clock game. So there's a six-game uh, six slate over on Yahoo. Uh, so depending, depending on which site you play on, uh, definitely make sure you know what time the slate's starting. Uh, two-hour difference between the two sites. Uh, so wanted to get that out of the way first. Also, I have a pretty big announcement that I'm very excited to share with you guys. Uh, so not happening right now, but starting in the beginning of December, most likely the first day of December, either December 1st or December 2nd, I will be launching my Patreon page. Uh, it's not fully finished yet. I still have to tweak some things, but if you guys don't know what Patreon is, it's pretty much a way I'll be able to give my subscribers premium content. I do upload videos to YouTube pretty much every single day. I've been doing these YouTube DS DFS videos for like almost three years now. Never have I provided premium content or paid content, but I will be doing so starting in December. I'm very excited for this. Uh, this will not be the first time you hear me tell you guys about this. I'll keep you guys informed as we get closer to the launch date. Hopefully you guys are excited. Um, let me know down in the comments if you would have some interest in joining. I'm going to have very cheap packages available. I'm going to have packages for NBA and NFL. And when MLB season starts, I'll have packages available for MLB as well. I'll have daily write-ups every day for the NBA slates, Monday through Friday, where I write up the whole slate. I mean, talk about all the players I like. Pretty much, I'll be providing more content rather than just the daily videos you see now. I'll have private videos only available to Patreon members, where I'll talk through Ross Construction, talk about cash game builds for that day's slate, talk about GPP plays. I also have a, like an updated Core 5 I do give out a core five now in my videos, but with NBA, things can change as the day goes on and stuff like that. So on Patreon, I'll have an updated core five all the way up to a lock. I'll continue to update the core uh, as injuries break. So if you're excited for pa my Patreon, let me know down in the comments. I'm very excited to launch it. I ho hope some of you guys will join me over there. I'm going to have a ton of content over on Patreon every single day uh, for NBA. And then for NFL, I'll have NFL content as well throughout the week. I'll have Packages for both, store, uh, both sports, I'll have bundles as well, so you can get both sports for a cheaper price. Uh, very excited to launch that at the beginning of December. But also, with that being said, uh, do wanna, before we do take a look at the slate, I want to let you guys know, as always, please be sure to drop a like down below. That is greatly appreciated. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And if you do have any questions, any comments, any feedback regarding the Patreon page or just like this video, you can leave that down in the comment section, or you can always... Hit me up on Twitter. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at DFS by Noah. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at today's slate. Start off at point guard. We'll work our way through each position. I'll touch on some injuries I see. Touch on some of my favorite plays that stand out to me. Uh, just early looks at the slate. I am recording this video on a Wednesday night, so these are kind of my first looks at the slate. But at the point guard position, we do have a couple stud options here. You got Luka Doncic at 10K, Trey Young at 9600, Kyrie, a big injury we're going to have to watch on Thursday. He's questionable as I'm recording this video. Uh, if he plays, I'm not probably going to be... I mean, it's a bad matchup against Denver. He's down to 8,800, though, on DraftKings. Hard for me to like have a ton of interest in Kyrie. If he were to sit, though, we will talk about Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie, especially with Karis LeVert already out. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie would be like one of the best plays on the slate at 5,700. But just looking at the two stud options at the top, Luka and Trey Young. I mean, I don't have a ton of interest in either guy today. Just like talking about building one lineup. I think if I'm building one lineup, a lot's going to depend on what uh, what goes on with the Clippers. We did see on Wednesday night Kawhi Leonard played and Paul George was out. It seems as though uh, the reverse is going to happen today. Kawhi Leonard's going to sit for this game and Paul George is going to play. So that's going to take Kawhi Leonard off the board and that's also going to open up some plays from the Clippers. Having a high usage player like Kawhi off the floor is going to open up a lot of usage for other guys. So I don't know if spending 10K for Luka and 9600 for Trey Young is going to be the optimal way to go today. Obviously, both guys have a ton of upside, but I think Giannis is probably someone I, tr I want to try and pay up for today against the Bulls. It's a great matchup. We do know that Chris Middleton's going to be out for the or for the Bucks, and when Chris Middleton has been uh, been off the floor this season, Giannis and Eric Bledsoe have been like usage monsters. So I don't think I'm going to be really paying up at point guard in general. Kind of the same with on Yahoo. Like you got Luka at 49, Kyrie and Trey Young are both 45. They're good GPP plays because they all, I mean, they get, they have upside. I don't think they're going to be too popular today, but hard for me to go to them as optimal plays. I think just looking at the point guard position, Drew Holiday, someone that stands out against uh, the Clippers with Lonzo Ball already out for this game. We also know that Brandon Ingram is questionable as well. 
If Ingram winds up sitting, it would be a big benefit to Drew Holiday. He played really well last, or even though he only shot 28% from the field, the peripherals were, st- were still there for Drew. He's going to be a threat for a triple double if Lonzo, or we know Lonzo's going to be out, but if Brandon Ingram is out as well. Only shot 28% from the field, still had 48 DraftKings points, was one rebound shy of a triple-double. I really like Drew in that game. With his price up to 8200 I don't think he's as good of a play as he was uh, on the last slate, but still would definitely be an option, especially if Brandon Ingram is out today. Also, uh, it seems like DraftKings took into account that Kawhi Leonard's probably going to rest today, so they bumped up Lou Williams to 7700 on DK. I think it's going to be hard for me to consider him a top play on DraftKings at 7700 If we do go over to Yahoo, you do have Drew Holl- or Lou Williams at $29, who's definitely in play over there. Drew Holiday, $33 as well. I think both those guys are really strong options. I do like Drew a lot on Yahoo at 33 uh, He's at shooting guard. We'll just go ahead and plug him into the core because I definitely feel like he's going to be a core play for me over there. With Lonzo out, I mean, he should be a usage monster. If Brandon Ingram is out, should see even more usage. He's going to handle the ball a ton with Lonzo out. Uh, so I do like um, Drew Holiday a lot on both sides. I think he's pretty appealing on Yahoo where he's still underpriced at $33. Eric Bledsoe at 7300 did get priced up. He's been playing really well lately. Plus Chris Middleton is out. I think this is a good price for Eric Bledsoe. This is what he should be priced. If we do go over to Yahoo though, I think Eric Bledsoe is just one of the easiest plays on Yahoo. He's only $22. That's just way too cheap for Bledsoe here with Chris Middleton out. We can pull up the numbers real, uh, real quick for the Bucks. Just look at how or who has benefited this season with Chris Middleton off the floor. I've already looked at it before I start recording, but I'll show you guys uh, just so you can see as well. There's been two big beneficiaries, and that's been Giannis and Eric Bledsoe. So Giannis in 114 minutes this season with Chris Middleton off the floor, 35% usage rate, 2.16 fantasy points per minute, just insane numbers. If we go over to Eric Bledsoe, 56 minutes this season with Eric, or with Chris Middleton off the floor, 26% usage rate, 1.46 fantasy points per minute. So these are going to be two usage monsters today. Eric Bledsoe is underpriced on Yahoo. He's one of the easiest plays of the day. I'd probably project him for about 40 fantasy points today, and that's just way too cheap for $22. I would much rather play him over guys like Dragic. Even if uh, like Tyler Hero's out and you get a lot of minutes for Dragic, I still would rather play Eric Bledsoe. Spencer Dinwiddie is going to be a really good play at $19 if Kyrie is out, but I would still rather have Eric Bledsoe. Uh, just choosing between those two guys, but I mean, if Kyrie's out, I'll probably play Bledsoe and Dinwiddie in the same lineup because Dinwiddie bec- would become a top option. On DraftKings, though, I don't think Bledsoe's as much of a priority since he's priced up, but still a guy you could definitely have in your player pool. I uh, talked about Spencer Dinwiddie. If Kyrie's out today, he becomes a top play at 5,700. Looking for value here, there's not much value that I really like at point guard. It's going to be interesting to see who benefits from Chris Middleton being out, just talking about bench guys. We could see Dante uh, DiVincenzo come off the bench, or or not come off the bench, but draw the start with Chris Middleton out. Uh, he's been playing about mid-15, or like mid-teens, low 20s in minutes pretty much every night. He has seen 20 and 21 minutes in two games. He was pretty effective in those games, shot really well from the field. If Dante DiVincenzo is starting this game, if he starts like at the two with Chris Middleton out, uh, he could definitely be a value at almost minimum salary, 3100 but that's kind of news we're going to have to wait and see on. As the day goes on uh, Thursday, we don't know yet who's going to start for Middleton. So let's go ahead and talk about some shooting guards now. We got a lot of plays here I've already touched on, like Drew, Luka. Uh, Zach Levine, although he's listed as questionable, he's actually probable to play. So he's expected to play, so that's not really an injury I'm too worried about. I mentioned Dinwiddie. I think Dinwiddie's going to be a great play if Kyrie's out today. Josh Hart is out today, which is pretty big. I think that's going to open up some value from the Pelicans. We're going to talk about a cheap value I'd like at small forward. You could definitely look to. We'll talk about him later on in the video. I think just scrolling through the shooting guard position, there's one play that really stands out to me for value, and that's J.J. Redick. So he's only 4,500 on DraftKings. He's played 29 and 37 minutes just the last two games. He did get moved back into the starting lineup in in that game against the Hornets. He also started their last game against the Rockets as well. He was very effective in those, in those game uh, in those games. Shot 46 and 43 percent from the field. Shot 46 and 55 percent from from three. When Redick is making his shots, he can put up big games. And there's going to be more usage to go around with Lonzo out, with Josh Hart out, more minutes to go around as well. Brennan Ingram potentially being out could open up even more usage for guys like JJ Redick. And out of all the Pelicans guys, he was one of the cheap or one of the plays that like still is too cheap. Didn't really get priced up. A lot of the Pelicans did, but Redick is still underpriced in my opinion 4500 on DK he's a really good play on Yahoo as well 
I told you I, li I really like Drew at shooting guard. I really like Lou Williams at shooting guard. But you do have J.J. Redick all the way down here at $11, who's for sure in play as a value. I do like plugging him into the core for now. But that's just kind of where I'm looking to at shooting guard. I mean, I feel like I'm going to be playing a lot of uh, J.J. Redick here. Like I talked about, you can maybe go to DiVincenzo if he draws a start for Chris Middleton. If Pat Connaughton starts for Chris, Middle uh, for Chris Middleton, then at 3600 he could be in play as a value. Uh, but that's probably it for the shooting guard position. I think this is probably a position I'm going to be going for cheaper plays. In my main lineup, I just don't think I'm going to be paying up for Luka today. Maybe I'll be able to get Drew Holiday in, but I have a feeling I'm going to be trying to jam in Giannis, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get Drew doing that. So talking about small forward now, I uh, did say I want to jam in Giannis, and I definitely do here. 11700 against the Bulls. Uh, this is an appropriate price for Giannis. This is what he's going to be priced at most nights. But now that Chris Middleton's off the floor, he should probably be like over 12K. He's going to project for over 60 fantasy points here if you give him full minutes. He's going to play 36 minutes if this game is competitive. Obviously, that's a big concern here because the Bulls are just not that good of a basketball team. I'm pretty sure the spread on this game right now is 12 points. Yeah, 230 total, so actually a very high total in this game, but a 12-point spread. I mean, it's not going to be a close game, I, I wouldn't imagine. Giannis should get probably 30 minutes, though, at least. Even if the game does blow out, he'll still play probably till the end of the third quarter, and he usually closes out the third quarter. So at 30, or if you project him for like 30 minutes, I think he still projects for 60 DraftKings points, just given his rate so far this season with Chris Middleton off the floor, averaging over two fantasy points per minute. It's going to be him and Eric Bledsoe doing everything for the Bucks tonight. So I love Giannis here. If this game stays competitive, I mean, he's, he's got 75, 80 point upside. This Bulls team has no answers for him. Should be able to do whatever he wants. You could definitely plug him into the Yahoo court if you wanted to at $55. But we're going to talk about some plays on Yahoo that I think are just way underpriced. So that's the only reason I'm not going to include Giannis in the Yahoo core. But uh, once you see the five I give out, you'll probably still have salary to get Giannis in there if you wanted to. Um, so just looking at other small forwards, Paul George is definitely going to be interesting here at 7900 if he's fully healthy and not limited. With Kawhi Leonard most likely uh, likely resting for this game since it's a back-to-back, -back, that probably means Paul George is going to play. And if he does, and he's going to play his full amount of minutes, which I would imagine he's not going to. I mean, this is his first game back from injury. He's probably going to be limited to like low to mid-20s in minutes. Uh, 7,900, he would be interesting if he plays full minutes. That's just kind of news we're going to have to wait and see on. Uh, Jabari Parker at 7,200 is definitely in play on DraftKings. I mean, this guy just has so much upside right now. He's definitely a bit risky because, I mean, Jabari's just not that good of a player, like overall basketball player. But for fantasy, he's definitely good for fantasy. He'll put up a ton of shots. He's a high usage player. With John Collins off the floor, we know the minutes are going to be there for Jabari. That Just the last three games, 32, 37, 33 minutes. Even in a tough matchup last game against Denver, you still got 36 DraftKings points from him. Just one rebound shy of the double-double bonus, so he could have easily had 40 DraftKings points. This is a much better matchup here facing the Suns rather than facing Denver. So I think Jabari is for sure in play on DraftKings. I really like him, though, over on Yahoo, where he's only $27. If you just compare his price to some of the other guys, like Markkinen's only a dollar cheaper. I would much rather have Jabari. Julius Randle is $4 more. I would much rather take the savings and play Jabari. I'd rather save over Porzingis and play Jabari. So that's the only reason I didn't include Giannis in the Yahoo core, because I think Jabari Parker remains underpriced on Yahoo at $27. Uh, we'll talk through some small forwards on Yahoo in a second, but just fin finishing out the DraftKings small forward uh, player pool, obviously I'm trying to pay up for Giannis here if possible. In this mid-range, Kelly Oubre really stands out given his price, but he's really been struggling from the field lately. Just hasn't been that good overall. His minutes have been down a little bit as well. Only 19 minutes in the last game against the Lakers, which is kind of concerning. I don't think he got hurt or anything in that game. He just wasn't playing well. 0 for 5 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. Most nights, you're going to get 30 minutes from Kelly Oubre in a matchup against the Hawks. He could obviously bounce back here, but that is a pretty risky play on this slate. I don't think you really need to go there, especially if you're only playing one lineup. I probably wouldn't take that risk. But value-wise, for cheap plays at small forward, I really do like Kendrick Williams on this slate as a value. He's 4,500 on DraftKings. He's really benefited lately from some of the injuries to the Pelicans. The last two games, he's played 28 and 38 minutes. In that game against the Hornets, they did move him into the starting lineup. I believe they started Drew at point, then they started Ingram, Reddick, Kendrick Williams, and Derek Favors. I imagine that's the same starting lineup they go with today. Even if uh, Brandon Ingram plays, Kendrick Williams will still start. He'll probably start at the four. He played 38 minutes last game he started. I mean, 
He's not a high usage player or a high volume player. Only took eight shots in that game, but he's a guy that can get the hustle stats. He can grab rebounds. He'll fight for rebounds. He'll get defensive stats as well. Could easily go for 25 to 30 DraftKings points, and I think at 4,500 for a guy that's probably going to play mid to low 30s in minutes, he's just too cheap in my opinion. So I really like Kendrick Williams as a value. You can definitely play him over on Yahoo as well. Just looking at the small forward position, I don't think Kawhi's going to be available today, so I won't include him. You got Paul George and Jimmy Butler to pay up for. And then after that, there's not much I really like, like Marcus Morris, Will Barton, Kelly Oubre. Don't think I'll really be going to those guys. Then you have Kendrick Williams all the way down here at $12, who I think is probably the play to go to at small forward if you're trying to save some salary, uh, just given the minutes he's probably going to play. So that's kind of where I'm looking to for small forward today. Probably going to be saving here with Kendrick Williams as a value. Uh, I don't think there's really any cheap, cheap values unless like a guy like Pat Connaughton starts, like I said earlier. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about some power forward plays now. So just looking at this position, kind of the same with uh, Lou Williams. I mean, Montrez Harrell, even if Kawhi's out today and rest and Paul George is in, I mean, Montrez Harrell should benefit, but he's up to 7,600 on DraftKings. It's hard to like jam him in. It's hard to say he's a must play at 7,600. If he was like 6K, 6,500, like he was on the last slate when uh, Kawhi was out, he'd be a smash play. But with the price uh, increase, I guess you could say the, the price increase, 7,600 for Harrell doesn't feel like a must. Jabari Parker is probably my favorite range or favorite play in this mid range between him, Randall, Porzingis. He'd be the guy that I like to go to. I think uh, in these fi- in this 5K range, Wendell Carter's for sure in play at 5600. He's co- he continues to see pretty solid minutes most nights. Uh, that game against the Hawks, he did foul out in 13 minutes. Most nights you're gonna get uh, upper to lower 30s in minutes from Wendell Carter. 5600 against the Bucks. He for sure is a guy that could give you 30, 35 DraftKings points. Can get you a double double with ease. I think Wendell Carter is definitely in play at the power forward position, uh, but it's hard for me to go to him in my main lineup because I think Derek Favors is a bit of a stronger option. Favors is only 5,500 on DraftKings. He has really benefited lately uh, just from him moving into the starting lineup. He has started the last two games. I'm not actually sure if he started that Charlotte game. I know he was very productive, though. He did start the last thing, last game, though, against Houston. He's played 29 minutes in both games, 32 and 41 DraftKings points. Derek Favors is a guy that's very productive when he gets the play in time. He just hasn't gotten the play in time this season, but now it looks like they're he's fully healthy and they're giving him the uh, the run that he should get. Also, I believe Jaleel Okafor is questionable for this game. I don't know if Derek Favors will see a bump in minutes. Uh, Okafor's minutes will probably just go to a guy like Jackson Hayes, but it doesn't help if Okafor or it doesn't hurt if Okafor's out. That should help Favors a little bit, I guess. Should secure his minutes. Really like the matchup as well against the Clippers. Clippers have really struggled to defend centers this season and just throughout the past. They've been a bad defensive team against centers. So Derek Favors, 5,500, especially because he has power forward and center eligibility on DraftKings. He's a guy that I like quite a bit today and definitely someone I'll be looking to on this slate. But for cheap values at power forward, there's not really much I like at this position. Maybe a guy like Jamichael Green could be in play if Kawhi rests today. We could see him maybe moving to the starting lineup or at least should get a solid run off the bench. So he could be an option you could look to for value. Scrolling through power forward on Yahoo, you got Giannis at the top, who I talked about I really like if you can fit him in. Uh, Jabari is for sure my favorite play at power forward, like in this mid-range. For value, though, I don't think there's really any value I like at power forward. I'm either going to be paying up for Giannis here or going to Jabari. Honestly, in my main lineup, I'll probably have both guys in there because I think they're both very strong plays. Uh, So we'll go ahead and knock out center real quick before we end the video. So just looking at the top of the center position, you do have Nikola Jokic at the top against the Nets, 8,600 on DraftKings. I mean, Jokic just feels like such a good play today. This is such a good matchup. Uh, Centers against the Nets have been something we've targeted all season this season and all of last season. Even with DeAndre Jordan uh, on the Nets now, they're still a team that has struggled to defend bigs. Rudy Gobert had a really big game against them last uh, on the last slate. I expect a big game from Jokic here. He's underpriced on DraftKings just for the upside that the guy has. He's going to play probably 34 to 36 minutes if the game is competitive. He's has I feel like he has a 40-point floor if, a get, if he's in a competitive game. And the ceiling is ob- obviously there for Jokic. Even though he hasn't shown much of a ceiling this season, this is still a guy that gives you triple-double upside most nights. Love the matchup. Love the pace as well. It's a pace-up spot for the, uh, for the Nets, or not for the Nets, for the Nuggets. If we do look at pace... So far this season, Brooklyn ranks top five. They're fifth in pace. If we scroll down here to the bottom, the Nuggets are last in pace. So, I mean, pretty much whoever the Nuggets face, it's going to be a pace-up spot, especially when you're facing a top five team in pace. So, 
Love Jokic here. I like him a lot on both sides. If we do go over to Yahoo, he's the most expensive uh, center on Yahoo, but he's only $39, which is honestly just way too cheap. I feel like just scrolling through center on Yahoo, uh, Jokic really stands out. Do want to talk about Derek Favors on Yahoo because I think he's way too cheap as well. We'll talk about him in a second. I'm for sure going to be trying to pay up for Jokic if possible. Uh, I think he's one of the top plays just overall on the slate. One of my favorite plays overall. Still underpriced on both sites. But now other centers you could look to. Don't see myself really going to Harrell or Julius Randle or Kristaps Porzingis on the slate. Even though Porzingis is 6,900. It is his first game back to New York to face the Knicks. He's already played the Knicks once this season, but that was in uh, in Dallas. Now he has to go back to his old stadium, back to the Garden to play the Knicks. I think there's definitely a narrative here for Porzingis. It's 6,900 though. I mean, I guess you could play him today for the narrative. I mean, he was like a, I mean, he was like the Knicks top guy. So if you want to chase the narrative here with Porzingis, that's fine. But I don't think there's really any other reason you play him. He does feel a bit underpriced. But I still want to try and get up to Jokic at center if possible. You can drop down to Derek Favors if you need to. Uh, if you want to play Porzingis, that's fine. But I don't think that's something I would be doing, Like especially not in cash games. You're really only doing that in tournaments. So other center plays that you could go to. Uh, Aaron Baines is someone I want to talk about on Yahoo. I still think he's too cheap at $19. Hard for me to play him on this slate because you do have Derek Favors for cheaper. And I think Derek Favors gives you a little bit more upside. But Baines at 19 in a matchup against the Hawks is for sure in play. Uh, I do want to talk about Derek Favors, though, on Yahoo. I think he's a good play on Yahoo as well at $17. Pretty much the same thing I said earlier. Like, the minutes should be there. Jaleel Okafor is questionable. That should, that should secure his minutes even more. He's a very productive player when he gets minutes, and it seems like the minutes are there for him now. Plus, it's a good matchup against the Clippers, so I like going to Favors in the Yahoo core. I think he definitely stands out at uh, $17. I don't know why I just plugged in. Why do I have six guys in here? What am I doing? Hold up. I messed this up. Drew should not be in the... Let's take Drew out of the Yahoo core. I don't know why I put Drew in the Yahoo core. I guess you could go with him, but we'll keep uh, favors or keep favors in there as the fifth guy. Wasn't supposed to plug in Drew, but if you wanted to, I mean, I guess you could plug him in. I love Drew Holiday on Yahoo as well. Uh, but that's that's the core I'm going for on Yahoo. I don't know why, why I plugged in Drew to begin with. He, was, he wasn't supposed to be in there. Uh, but let's go ahead and go back to DraftKings real quick and finish out the video. So other 5K centers, you got the guys I've talked about. Wendell Carter, 5,600, I think, is in play. Uh, there's probably no value I want to go to at center. There's no cheap plays I see. Like Damian Jones started last game for the Hawks, but he really didn't do anything. 20 minutes, 16 DraftKings points. I mean, this is a much better matchup against the Suns having rather than having to face the Nuggets, but I don't see Damian Jones playing probably more than 20 minutes a night. So even at a cheap price of 3700 he's not going to be a top value for me. I'm mainly looking to pay up for Jokic here or play guys like Derek Favors. If you want to chase the narrative with Porzingis, you could do that. You could play Wendell Carter at 5600 that's just kind of where I'm looking to at the center position today, guys. Uh, so I think that's it for my DraftKings core and my Yahoo core. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, and hopefully it did help you. Like I said at the beginning, at uh, the beginning of December, 1st of December, I will be launching my Patreon page, which I am very excited to launch. Uh, hopefully you guys do uh, sign up on my Patreon page. Let me know down in the comments if you're going to have interest in it, if you plan on signing up. I'll have uh, content for all sports other than just the YouTube videos that you see every day. I'll be providing exclusive pa uh, exclusive content, content on Patreon starting the beginning of December. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure to drop a like down below, as always. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring that notification bell so that way you get notified every time I upload. You don't miss out on any, any of my new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter, at DFS by Noah. Stay up to date with me on Twitter. If you need to contact me, you can DM me over there. Uh, but good luck on the slate tonight, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.